Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's move on. Good conversation there. And one we'll have again over the years for sure as it relates to Bellingham and Madrid. Let's go. It is Valentine's Day, as we mentioned at the top of the show. Time for love it or hate it. I'm going to give you guys a take, and I'm going to start with – I'm going to say a hopeless romantic and LME. You get the first crack at this one. I'll give you a take. You tell me you love it or you hate it. Napoli will knock out Barcelona in the round of 16 of Champions League. Of course, they start their tie next week. Love it or hate it? First of all, Dallin, I am a hopeless romantic. And by the way, the Eche Garay household is vehemently against Valentine's Day because if you need Valentine's Day in your life, you're doing it all wrong, baby. You're doing it all wrong. All right? Listen, Napoli, I love this. Napoli will knock out Barcelona in the round of 16. There is no better time to beat Barcelona. And Napoli, by the way, who are not doing that great at Serie A, are welcoming that Victor Osman. And Barcelona have conceded 23 goals in 2024 alone. Okay? And they can easily be hurt by a Napoli side that's going to be up for it because right now Serie A is not going their way. So they need something. They haven't scored much since he left. Osman is back. I love this. I see Napoli getting some redemption here and taking Barcelona out of the round 16. Alex, love it or hate it? I mean, if anyone saw how Barca played against Granada in La Liga the other day, when they drew 3-3 against Granada, one of the absolute worst teams in Spain, I don't rate their chances particularly. I know that Napoli have had their own, their own issues this season, but still, Barca are, are, are a mess. Um, and the fact that Xavi announced that he's going in the summer hasn't helped turn around their form at all. It hasn't really sparked a reaction from, uh, from the players. Like I say, that, that Granada game was, was, was pretty shambolic. Barca's defence, which was their strong point last season, has been catastrophic at times uh, this season. The one bit of good news they've had recently is Ter Stegen coming back in goal, which is a big deal for them. Barca's season now, like I say, they're out of the, the La Liga title race. That's gone. Real Madrid are off in the, in the distance. So it really is all about the Champions League this season and about Champions League qualification for, for next season. But looking at this Barcelona team, I just don't see them being capable of being able to compete at the, at the highest level in Europe. They've really missed um, the injured Gavi, who's a, a massive deal for them that he's that he's out. And a lot of the senior players, the likes of Lewandowski, the likes of Frankie de Jong um, and others just haven't really stepped up and that they haven't delivered. So I, I, I've got to say, I'm, I'm extremely fearful of, of Barca's chances against that. All right. Both of you guys love that take. Augie, do you want to weigh in here? Yeah, I think I tipped Napoli to beat Barcelona when the draw was made and I'm, I'm not changing my mind. I, you know, both clubs are in a bit of a mess. That, like, we're not kind of kidding ourselves that they're both on form. But I just think like LME said, Ossiemen's back for, for Napoli. And I just think that I was there last season when they were knocked out by Milan in the, uh, I think, in the quarterfinals. And there was a real sense of Napoli really missing a really good chance to to go all the way last season. They were, they were a fantastic team during the middle part of the last season. Then it faded a bit towards the end. They've got a chance now to make up for that. They can beat Barcelona. And, you know, nice draw in the quarterfinals, could take them to the semis. They've got the stadium, which is probably the mo- one of the most hostile and atmospheric stadiums in the Champions League. So I think Napoli go through this tie actually quite comfortably. I think I think it's quite a sad story at Barcelona right now. And who thought, you know, not so long ago that Barcelona would be, you know, struggling to get through the, the round of 16 in the Champions League, but they're in a mess. All right, by ESPN bet, despite what you guys all just said, Napoli is the underdog, plus 120. You bet 100 bucks to get 120. For Barcelona, you got to bet 100, bet 170 bucks to get 100. They are minus 170 right now on ESPN bet. But I'm right there with you. I think I like the Italian team as well. But yes, the 2024 Olympics are taking place in Paris this summer. You can have three over 23 age players. Should Lionel Messi play? Should in the Olympics with Argentina? Alex, fire away. Love it or hate it? Sure. Why not? Love it. Why not? More Messi. <laughs> Look, Messi is, is the greatest player of all time. He's not going to be around forever. Let's just make, let's squeeze every last drop of Messi out of him for as long as we possibly can. Send him to the Olympics. Let him win the gold medal with Argentina. Fantastic. I, you know, I want to see Messi playing. Every opportunity I get, I want to see him play. So, yes, why not? Let's do it. He's not going to be around forever. So let's let's enjoy him as, as much as we physically can. Okay. Uh, we've got our messy whisperer here. Uh, LME, I didn't let you start, but we are going to finish this one. Love it or hate it. More, more Inter Miami might hate it, but go ahead. Love it or hate it that Messi's going to play in Paris with Argentina. I love my boy Alex Kirkland, but I'm, I'm disagreeing with him here. I, I hate this. I, I think it's a love for the neutral. Like he said, the more messy, the better. He is the greatest player the game has ever seen. And you obviously want to see more and more of him. But just like you said, Dallin, Inter Miami won't be too happy, as well as World Cup qualifiers for Argentina won't be too happy. And let's not forget that if Argentina go far in Copa America, he's going to need a rest at some point, because otherwise, if you do take him to Paris, what are you going to see, a one-legged Messi? Somebody that gives you one minute and doesn't do anything? We don't want to remember Messi like that. So yes, as a neutral, it would be amazing. He won his first 
sort of proper trophy at the Olympics in 2008. So it would be great to see him in Paris. Obviously, Mascherano, who's in charge of the under-23s, wants to see him back. Kylian Mbappé wants to play with France at the Olympics. So it would be a really cool thing to see. But let's calm down here. 37 years old by the time the Olympics come. So I hate this, but I know that many love this. Augie, are you as passionate? Yeah, can I have the casting vote here in, in, in Sarah Bellamy? And, you know, okay. I take Alex's point about, you know, squeezing the last drop out of Messi. But that's already happening. And we, and we saw what happened when they had that postponed guard. He, he missed the game in Hong Kong. It, it caused a, almost a diplomatic incident. So I think Messi is being squeezed a little bit too much. And I think he needs to, you know, enjoy the remaining years of his career. He doesn't want to go back to Paris because that's where he had probably the most miserable two years of his career. So I think I want to see the next generation. I want to see the next yes. generation of Argentine superstars. And there's plenty of those. So... No, Lionel Messi's not for the Olympics. He's got his World Cup gold medal. He's got his Copper America medal. He doesn't need another Olympic one. So let him have a rest. Let him chill out in Miami. And let's 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 look to the new set, set of Argentine superstars that are going to come out of the World Cup, uh, the Olympics this summer. Yes, good point, Ogi. Good point. Echeverri, Valentin Barco. Argentina have a ridiculous squad. A really, really good one. I'm going to take over the next one, Dallin, because this one's oh, for sweet. you first, my friend. This one's for you first. The biggest round of 16 upset in the Champions League is going to be Porto over your Gunners. Love or hate? I take the I take offense to the question. I, I I mean, Rob Moore, if I could slap you, I would. Our producer, like the, inc the inclusion of this offends me as a fan and and, and as, as not just an Arsenal fan, as a soccer fan. It's just never going to happen. I hate it. It's not going to happen. It's out of question. I've waited seven years, fellas. This is real. I host a serious XM show on show, a show on the radio. I took off next Wednesday because it's three shows, three to six. I've been waiting seven years to get back and hear that song in a knockout situation. We're not working. Beverage in hand. And yeah, they're going to go through. The gunners are. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Rob, go ahead. I've said my piece. Love it or hate it. If you disagree with him, but I just disconnect the whole thing. Go ahead. Oh, there's a silence there because I think you said Rob instead of Augie, right? Oh, you want me oh, no, to do it? I'll take it. Yeah, I want we, we were all trying to work out who does he think is called Rob. Yeah, no, no. Um, li listen, man. <laughs> Alex worked out. I'm <laughs> shocked that uh, Dallin took the day off. That's what I no, no. Listen, I'm an Arsenal fan too, so um, I also take offence at this um, at this this doubting of Champions League dark horse winners, Arsenal of, of 2024. No, no. Arsenal going all the way. Don't worry about that. There we go. Augie, go ahead. No, no, no. Listen, listen. Let Arsenal always gets the round of 16. That, that's, that's the tradition, isn't it? Arsenal gets to the round of 16 and then and wave bye-bye. One thing about Porto, Sporting, Benfica, they are dangerous. The Portuguese teams are dangerous in the Champions League. They get underestimated and they turn up. They're well-organised. They've got a lot of great players, a lot of Brazilian players that people don't know anything about. Portuguese players looking for a big move in Europe. You know, we saw with Darwin Nunes at Benfica, how he made his big move from Benfica at Liverpool on the back of a great Champions League tournament. Portuguese teams are the most dangerous teams in the Champions League for that reason. So... I actually predicted again back in the draw that Porto would win this time. I still think they will. Take him off, please. Uh, Rob is the producer, by the way. I got distracted looking at the chat. Go ahead, LME. No, I mean, the only thing I was going to say is like, you know, in terms of the biggest round of 16 upset, I think Real Sociedad might want to say something about that when yeah. they play PSG. Lazio, too, as well. And Copenhagen, you never know. I mean, it's not going to happen, but obviously it would be incredible to see that. But Porto are not doing that great in the league, respectively, given the reputation that they have. Third in the Portuguese league, it hasn't been great. Uh, but they, like Augie said, you know, they still have a reputation in this competition. But don't worry, Dallin and Alex Kirkland. I'm with you. Arsenal will be fine in this round. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Elmi. Augie. <laughs> Not too happy with you. Uh, <laughs> let's go to Leverkusen real quick. I mean, they were the stories of global football that seems to not get talked about that much. They dismantle Bayern at the weekend. They're unbeaten so far in the Bundesliga. So the take is, and Augie, I'll start with you, Bayern Leverkusen will go the season unbeaten in the Bundesliga. Well, they should do. They've just beaten Bayern Munich 3-0. That's the big rival. But, you know, we've all seen title races in the past, especially teams that are, are new to title races. And when it gets to March, when it gets to April, it gets jittery. And I think if, if Bayern Leverkusen really drop a point, Bayern win, then the gap closes. That's when the jitters start. And I think I don't think they'll go through the season and beat. And I think there'll be a there'll be a slip up at some point. And it's how they react to that slip up. But I do think that Leverkusen will lose a game at some point soon. We're running short of time. I do want to hit on two of these topics. Either Alex or or Elmi, you either disagree with that take? Yeah, and I'll be very quick. I love it. I don't see anything right now that says otherwise that Xavi Alonso's Leverkusen can do this. I understand what he's saying, but I think uh, what Augie's saying. But I think one of the biggest components here is like. 
I am Xabi Alonso is the best manager in Europe right now. Never mind Young or whatever. What he's doing with this team is ridiculous. And you know, it, it, you know, we've seen your Arsenal do it undefeated. Why not? Why not Leverkusen do it? Turn from Leverkusen to doing it finally. And if Europa League and the Pokal doesn't get in the way, yeah, why not? I love it. Okay. All right. Let's on that same note though, and Augie, you brought this one up, so I'll come back to you. Uh, Jabby Alonso is the right man for the Liverpool job. Love it or hate it. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of this take because, listen, he's had a great season at, at Labour Cues and he could win the, the league. And he is obviously a rising star in, in coaching, as LME said. There's not many out there right now you'd say are, are better than him. But had he not played for Liverpool and won the Champions League with Liverpool, would he be the top of Liverpool's list? Would he be the guy that everyone is saying is perfect for Liverpool? Because I can point everyone to a, a fantastic piece by Ryan O'Hanlon last week about who Liverpool should appoint to play Jurgen Klopp. And he addressed the situation with Xabi Alonso and he made the really good point that Everything that Alonso is good at is what Liverpool don't do. And everything that Jurgen Klopp is good at, Xabi Alonso's teams don't do. So there's a real romantic notion about Xabi Alonso, and I can see that. And he is a rising star, but his teams play differently to Liverpool. They don't play the same way. And, and Billy Hogan, when he was sat next to Jurgen Klopp at the training ground recently, to, when Klopp stepped down, he said, we will, use, we will have a data-led search for this new coach. If that's the case, Xabi Alonso isn't the man for Liverpool because the data, if you're looking at data, doesn't point to Alonso. So... Yes, he's a great rising star. I can see the emotion, but if data led is what data is what Liverpool are going to do, it's going to be somebody else. Alex, forget Liverpool. It's when he's coming to Madrid. It's when he's coming to the Bernabeu that we we care about. He, you know, to replace Carlo Ancelotti, he's been the one that's been earmarked by Real Madrid for a couple of seasons now. They felt that he wasn't quite ready when they extended Ancelotti's contract. But long term, when Ancelotti does go, we don't know when that's going to be. They think that Xabi Alonso is the is the man to come here. So whether it's he goes to Anfield. And then the Bernabeu or, or, or straight to Madrid. This, I think, at some point is the, is the destination for him. Interesting. LME, where are you at on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly what the boys are saying. Xabi Alonso, amazing. But, like, you know, Liverpool play a completely different game. Leverkusen are patient, counter-attacking in a way that's, you know, smooth and resilient. It's not the gag impressing that they're used to from Jurgen Klopp. And, by the way, there's a lot of other pieces aside from a new manager, Mohamed Salah's future, etc. I love the idea of Xabi Alonso at Real Madrid one day because that is the one team that can adapt to a Xabi Alonso system straight away. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. 